Tonight, the verdict is in, in the Derek Chauvin murder trial for the death of George Floyd. And the partisan fight. Act urgently to protect the sacred right to vote. As Democrats and Republicans agree on the fundamental American right to vote. The right to cast a ballot, of course, is the cornerstone of our democracy. The debate over how, when, and where to vote heats up on Congress. All this and more tonight on Fake Nation. Derek Chauvin, now a convicted former cop. Welcome to Faith Nation. I'm John Jessup. And I'm Jenna Bratter. Late this afternoon, the jury returning its verdict, guilty on all charges. That's right. Chauvin convicted of both murder and manslaughter in the death of George Floyd last May. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second-degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021, at 1.44 p.m. Signed, juror four-person juror number 19. Same caption, verdict count two. We the jury in the above entitled matter as to count two, third degree murder, perpetrating an eminently dangerous act, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April 2021 at 1.45 p.m. Signed by jury four person, juror number 19. Same caption, verdict count three. We the jury in the above entitled matter as to count three, Second degree manslaughter, culpable negligence, creating an unreasonable risk. Find the defendant guilty. And the three guilty charges are manslaughter, third degree murder, and second degree murder. For second degree murder, known as felony murder, prosecutors had to prove the killing occurred while the defendant committed another felony crime, in this case, third degree assault. Prosecutors did not have to prove murderous intent. Second-degree murder could result in up to 40 years in prison. Then Derek Chauvin also faced a third-degree murder charge. Prosecutors there had to prove death came due to actions that were, quote, eminently dangered, uh, dangerous, and that's characterized as actions carried out with reckless disregard for and conscience indifference to the loss of life. That could result in up to a 25-year prison sentence. And finally, second-degree manslaughter. Prosecutors had to prove death occurred due to culpable negligence. That negligence created an unreasonable risk and consciously took the chance of causing death or great bodily harm. This charge could result in up to 10 years in prison. Sentencing set for two months from now. Well, here with us now is Ken Blackwell, Senior Fellow at the Family Research Council. Ken, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, you've been following the case. Your reaction to tonight's jury decision? The rule of law won. It won in spite of attempts to uh, inject partisanship uh, and to divide the, the community by outside agitators. Uh, the, the judge uh, did a good job of controlling uh, the, 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 the courtroom. Uh, and he set, a, he set a tone of objectivity. And Mr. Chauvin was found guilty by a jury of his peers and his local community. There was a powerful uh, stack of evidence uh, that the prosecution uh, used to, to make their case. Uh, not only the, the video, but the testimony of, of police officers and, and medical officials, which in fact, I guess established in the jury's mind beyond a reasonable doubt that he was guilty of, of the three charges that had been levied against him. Yeah. And the jury making that decision very quickly, I think to the surprise of some. Uh, Ken, it's still too early to tell what the reaction exactly will be, but what is your sense? How are Americans going to respond to this? I think, again, we should celebrate that in our country, in our country's 245th year as a constitutional republic, uh, that we, in fact, uh, uh, have a, an, an environment of country where the rule of law reigns. Uh, and we, we, we don't succumb to vigilantism uh, or mob rule. Uh, we let the facts uh, speak for themselves in a courtroom uh, and a jury of the, the uh, accused peers uh, rendered a decision. Uh, so do you think we'll see protests and riots or what's your sense? 
I, I don't I don't anticipate that we will see uh, protests and, and riots, particularly not from folks who are indigenous to that community. Uh, you never know what happens when you have outsiders who uh, who would have us choose chaos over community uh, and who actually want to agitate and create disruption in our in our communities. Uh, but I'm 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 rooting on and pulling for and 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 I'm pretty sure that what will happen uh, is that uh, calm will win out, uh, uh, justice has been rendered, uh, and that will be accepted by a broad uh, cut of the community. Ken, evangelical leaders are chiming in. Russell Moore uh, with the Southern Baptist Convention said justice was, uh, was rendered and to remember the family of George Floyd as we work together for a new era of racial justice and hope. Uh, the Reverend Sammy Rodriguez had this sobering reminder that there will probably be another George Floyd and another Derek Chauvin. I want to ask, um, where do we go from here? And in any way, does this have the unintended effect of worsening the divide when it comes to policing and race? I would hope not. I would hope that as we are praying, that we pray for the men and women uh, who form that thin uh, blue line. Uh, men and women who get up every day, do their jobs uh, in an earnest fashion uh, to protect us, uh, to render our neighborhoods safe places for families and children uh, and, and, and enterprise to take place so that families can, can work uh, and prosper and, and, and recreate together. Uh, so uh, we, we have a lot to pray for in this in, in, in our nation. Uh, I, I think that again, we should mm. celebrate uh, that justice mm -hmm. reigns uh, and, and, and not uh, you know uh, chaos and the rule right. of the mob and vigilantes. All right, Ken Blackwell with the Family Research Council. We will leave it there this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Ken. God bless. Good to be with you. Well, we now know the verdict, guilty on all charges. Now the question, how will Americans react? We've been seeing violent protests, many wondering if they'll continue, and certainly uh, precautions for the possibility of violent protests. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz is urging people in his state to stay calm. In this moment, it's our goal together, the mayors, the community organizers, people across this state, from law enforcement to ministerial associations, is to try and make sure that we strike that proper balance of making sure that the peace and stability is upheld, but that equally as important is that rage that will be on the street regardless of what happens is channeled into a positive way, and that positive way means change. If we don't listen to those communities in pain and those people on the streets, many of whom were arrested for speaking a fundamental truth that we must change, or we will be right back here again. And that was Governor Walls of Minnesota. Well, ahead of tonight's verdict, U.S. House Chaplain Margaret Grun Kibben started the legislative day with a prayer over the country and the outcome. As a country, we are rent with acrimony, torn by our individual understandings of right and wrong, facts and feelings, and divided by a host of opinions on crime and punishment call us to lay all of this, as hopeless as it appears, on your judgment seat. Then lay your divine hand upon the outcome of this case and also on our compatriots' anger. Stay any inclinations toward violence and remind us that vengeful behavior is no more justified than the acts of those who precipitated this grief and harm and ignited our cities. Well, President Biden, speaking with the family of George Floyd, who he's come to know, says leading up to this verdict, he could only imagine the pressure and anxiety they were feeling. They're a good family, and they're calling for peace and tranquility, no matter what that verdict is. I'm praying the verdict is the right verdict, which is, I think it's overwhelming in my view. I wouldn't say that unless the, the jury was sequestered now, not hear me say that. But so we, we just talked to them. I want to know how they were doing. The president's comments come in the wake of a firestorm over remarks from Congresswoman Maxine Waters. On the ground in Minneapolis this weekend, Waters demanded protesters, quote, get more confrontational, depending on the jury's verdict. 
Last night, the judge in the case, he weighed in rebuking her comments and adding that they could lead to an appeal. And with us now, CBN Chief Political Analyst David Brody. David, thanks for being here. President Biden, as you well know, was supposed to deliver remarks on his infrastructure plan tonight, but he canceled them after getting word that the verdict was forthcoming. David, was that the right move? Well, sure. I, I think so. I mean, the, you know, we're in the moment right now. Uh, and honestly, the question is now going to become for not just Joe Biden, but really for uh, Democrats and Republicans, too. What are they going to do with the Derek Chauvin uh, guilty verdicts? Uh, you know, you know, I, I would suggest that maybe the answer is somewhere in incrementalism. Uh, you know, in other words, you know, the system, so to speak, a lot of people want to change the system. Well, if you're going to change the system, you have to kind of go one block at a time. And maybe this is the, the time where Republicans and Democrats can can feed off of, uh, of this uh, guilty verdict and go ahead and try and, and revamp some of uh, what's been going on in America. But here's the key, and it's important to understand this. Uh, you know, we, we know that most police officers, the majority of police officers, the vast majority of police officers are good people. Uh, they are people that are trying to help protect and serve communities. And so so I'm, I'm a little concerned that this will once again become one of these divisive fights in America rather than trying to look at the system and figure out a way to incrementally make it better. And that was one point that the prosecution made, you know, that this is a trial over Derek Chauvin, not the profession of policing. Uh, David, the president, as you know, is is known for his empathy. He lost his first wife and, and daughter in a tragic car accident, uh, his son recently uh, to Bo to cancer. What do you think his role will be now in showing empathy and in being a consoler in chief? Well, we saw some of this already, as you showed, uh, calling George Floyd's family uh, right away, obviously, after the verdict that was planned in terms of, you know, they made sure, the White House made sure that that was going to happen. And, and he'll address the nation tonight, is my understanding, uh, along with the vice president, too. So, uh, you know, Joe Biden does empathy really well. Uh, what... The, the, what remains is whether or not he does compromise well. Uh, he's talked about unity. Uh, so far, he's been O for unity. Uh, he hasn't been able to do much of anything when it comes to unity on legislative issues. Well, there's going to be a legislative issue in front of him uh, as it relates to some sort of reform in the criminal justice system or policing. Uh, the, the question is, how much can he go uh, from a compromised standpoint? I think that will be what I'm, what I'm looking for here. David, today on the House floor, about an hour before the verdict was reached, Republicans introduced a resolution to censure Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Uh, it's the story that we heard Jenna talking about just a little bit earlier over her comments in Minneapolis. Those comments, of course, landed her in hot water. And the judge last night said her words could lead to an appeal in the case. David, what is the political fallout for, for Waters and for Democrats? Well, I don't think there's much right now uh, because of the guilty verdict. Uh, you know, so therefore, there's not an anticipation that there'll be mass riots in the streets. And so therefore, Maxine Waters may be off the hook for now. But that's the key for now. We'll see what happens. The appeals will come. And there could be now another wave, potentially, with the judge saying what he said about Maxine Waters. We'll see. I mean, I, I think she's off the hook for now. But, uh, you know, I think there's still a, a second a second saga here coming soon. Yeah. All right, David Brody, great to have you with us this evening. Thanks, David. Thanks, guys. Thanks, David. Coming up, the national debate over voting laws and the conflict between election security and election fraud after this. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead, just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. 
Orphans Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We are working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Welcome back. Well, from Georgia to dozens of other states across the country, there is a fierce debate happening over voting laws. That's right, Jenna. One element questions whether requiring an ID harkens back to Jim Crow restrictions or good practice to prevent voter fraud. CBN's Jennifer Wishon reports on that debate taking place among senators today at the United States Capitol. Democrats and Republicans agree voting is a fundamental American right that should be protected. How to do it? Well, there's little consensus. Case in point, a hearing today by the Senate Judiciary Committee entitled Jim Crow 2021, the latest assault on the right to vote. The title of this hearing is offensive. And as a student of history, this title diminishes the very real challenges and unfairness that minorities endured in the Jim Crow South at the hands of Southern Democrats. Although congressional leaders are pushing a sweeping new federal election law, state requirements like voter IDs sit at the center of the debate. A Rasmussen Reports poll conducted last week found 62% of Americans feel ID requirements don't discriminate. Democrats argue, however, they have one aim, to keep black and brown Americans from casting ballots. Just this year, more than 360 bills with restrictive voting provisions have been introduced in 47 states. These new pieces of legislation may not involve literary, literacy tests or counting the number of jelly beans in a jar like the original Jim Crow. But make no mistake, they are a deliberate effort to suppress voters of color. The corporate fallout that followed Georgia's new law by major corporations like Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines, along with Major League Baseball's decision to move its all-star game out of Atlanta, also drew debate. When partisans and companies collude to ruin the livelihoods of their opponents, there's a term for that. It's economic terrorism. In an op-ed published on Fox Business and addressed to woke corporate America, Florida Senator Rick Scott wrote, you will rue the day when it hits you. That day is November 8th, 2022. That is the day Republicans will take back the Senate and the House it will be a day of reckoning. For its part, the Biden administration this week named Justin Levitt, senior advisor for democracy and voting rights, to help the president keep his promise of election reforms. The Federal Voting Rights Act passed the House last month, but faces gridlock in the evenly split Senate, where it needs a filibuster-proof 60-vote majority. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Jennifer, thanks. And coming up, from Eastern Europe to Africa, major developments around the world. The latest when Faith Nation returns. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. 
the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit cbnnewschannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. CBN Senior International Correspondent George Thomas joins us now to talk about a number of the other international news making headlines around the world. George, uh, first to the situation along Ukraine's eastern border with Russia. Concern over that massive Russian military buildup there. Is Russia preparing to invade Ukraine? Yeah, that is the big question, right? I mean, the optimistic view is that this massive deployment of troops, military tanks, armored personal vehicles, and all kinds of other military hardware in the last couple of weeks right on that eastern uh, border with, uh, with Russia uh, is uh, an attempt by Moscow to send uh, Kyiv, the government in, uh, in Ukraine, uh, a warning to try and use the buildup as a way to negotiate, uh, get the two parties to the negotiating table and try to come to some kind of uh, re re resolution uh, uh, with this conflict that's been going on since 2014 in this part of Ukraine. The pessimistic view among the analysts, the Russia watchers, is that, uh, is that the Kremlin is getting ready to invade uh, Ukraine. One EU estimate is that uh, there are close to about 150,000 Russian uh, troops deployed on the Eastern Front as well as uh, in the Crimean Peninsula. So it really is a very, very dicey situation. Not sure how Moscow is going going to uh, respond in the days and weeks ahead. Certainly a lot of concern on that front. George, to the rising tensions between Washington and Beijing, China's president made some critical remarks during an economic forum about countries that seek to dominate the world. George, what did uh, President Xi say? Yeah, this is during their economic uh, forum that uh, takes place in China every year. I call it the, the equivalent of the European Davos a meeting of various uh, Asian uh, countries in the region. And uh, Xi Jinping didn't necessarily uh, name the countries, but uh, clearly he was talking about the United States and this idea uh, that, uh, that uh, hegemonic countries, the accusation is that countries like the United States and other Western countries love to dominate, love to tell the rest of the world how the world should be governed. And China, China's leader basically says that uh, China will never, his country will never seek uh, hegemony, will never seek the sort of expansionist viewpoint to, to try and tell everybody else how to live. Uh, the problem is that the U.S. intelligence community has uh, looked at China and they have labeled China as the number one threat against the United States right at this very moment. Not ISIS, not al-Qaeda. In fact, FBI Director Christopher for Ray uh, telling senators last week that currently there are close to about 2,000 open investigations that tie wow. back to the Chinese government as we speak. And he says that uh, almost every, every 10 hours there is a new probe that is opened up uh, uh, in relations to China's ongoing activities, uh, some of them nefarious activities uh, here in the United States. George, as we continue our trek across the globe uh, to the African, Central African nation of Chad, and the stunning news that its president was killed today on the battlefield. George, what happened and how will that change things? Yeah, really, really stunning. It was unbelievable. Idris uh, Debbie, who is 68 years old, over the weekend, uh, he joined uh, the ongoing uh, uh, battle against uh, a rebel group in the northern part of the country, a few hundred miles north of the capital city in Jamani. Uh, and uh, he was uh, there touring the operations. We're not quite sure what happened, how this all took place, but apparently he was uh, injured uh, in the process 
process and uh, uh, died uh, today. The official announcement came out today. This is a, an army officer by training. He has been a fearless uh, a military man. He has survived numerous uh, attempts. Uh, to, to take him uh, to, to overthrow the government, uh, but clearly this has uh, created an un, you know, unstable situation. His son, uh, the 38-year-old uh, Mahmat, will uh, rule the country for the next uh, 18 months. All right, George, we are unfortunately out of time. George Thomas, thanks for coming on Faith Nation. Sure. Coming up, an applauding farewell to Walter Mondale and remembering a moment of bipartisan glory next. I am region's first ROTC graduate. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Finally tonight, former Vice President and Minnesota Senator Walter Mondale left a lasting le a political legacy after he died Monday at the age of 93. When he lost his re-election bid back in 1980, Mondale respectfully accepted his defeat to the applause of a bipartisan Congress. Walter F. Mondale of the state of Minnesota has received 49 votes. <laughs> And before his death, Mondale composed an email to President Biden and hundreds of staffers expressing his thankfulness. President Biden was mentored by Mondale and said the former vice president provided a roadmap of engagement and respect to successfully take on the job. He will be very dearly missed by many. Yeah, and I think a big part of his legacy is he modernized the vice president's office when he was under uh, Jimmy Carter. So um, a life well lived. True lasting legacy. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.